Okay, hi, good to see you, and uh, thank you for having me here. And today I would like to bring some kind of case, stu case studies for uh, like a study for higher disinfection efficacy of ultraviolet, that kind of technology. My company, Paja, has produced, manufactured and produced over 900 vessels, 900 systems for all around the globe. And now we've done, we've carried out a mountain of experiments to develop the ultraviolet technology, actually. So uh, today I bring three main case studies for you to understand. And, uh, unfortunately, recently we faced a kind of difficulties from the rejection of U.S. Coast Guard on uh, a kind of biological efficacy testing method. It's called MPN, most probable number. And so the only efficacy testing method is FDA, same FDA method. That is the only method available. So as a manufacturer who chose FDA, same FDA method from the beginning of GA certificate, and of course for USH type approval, I want to try my best to persuade, it. though 10 minutes presentation is not enough for, uh, to get to my goal, but I will try my best. So, oops. Okay, before jumping into the main case study, I think it's better to explain a kind of general idea of UV light. So UV light is the region of electromagnetic spectrum between, uh, that lies between X-rays and visual light, and it can be divided into four sectors, UVV, C, B, A. But actually, UVV and UVA are impractical for disinfectant. So UVC and UVB, between 200 to 300 nanometers, are used to disinfect microorganisms. And UV light actually can play a role like in deforming the DNA structure of microorganisms so that uh, the UV light can render them harmless and uh, prevent them from their reproduction. But also UV light can play a role like in uh, destroying the epidermal cells, like at the surface of a cell that UV light can and make it explode it like that. So it also can be classified as a kind of killing method. So, and in order to estimate the performance, UV light performance, we currently, uh, we in general use the UV dose or UV dosage as a kind of criterion. And it can be calculated by multiplying UV intensity and the resistance time of microorganisms in the UV reactor. So lamp output and water quality can influence on UV intensity, and the flow rate and UV reactor dimension can also influence on resistance time. And so you need to understand that there are a variety of kind of cases of microorganisms when they are passing through the UV reactor. So some microorganisms can travel close to the UV lamp, receiving higher UV dose, but uh, the other microorganisms also can have a travel uh, close to UV reactor walls. It means very far from UV lamp, uh, receiving lower dose. So every microorganism can receive a different amount of the UV dose. And uh, in order to estimate the UV performance and for more improvement, we in general use the CFD modeling computational fluid dynamics for estimation, and the CFT can help us to predict the trajectories of microorganisms inside the UV reactor. And it's very important to know that the thickness of water layer between two lamps also can influence on UV dose delivery. If this space is thin, UV light from one lamp can be observed by the other lamp. And if the layer is too thick, water can passed through the UV reactor without any exposure to UV light. So it's very critical to know this in general. So uh, for CFD modeling, uh, firstly we do the 3D modeling, like the picture on the below, and later we also need to check UV intensity together because the nearest part of the UV lamp uh, has the highest UV intensity. And Later, thirdly, we also will do the calculation of velocity. And because the calculation of the velocity means the calculation of total resistance time of microorganism inside UV chamber. And lastly, uh, we will bring a thousand virtual particles and let them flow inside the UV chamber so that we can gather the data of UV dose distribution. And the result is, as you show, 
Uh, this is the graph of the result. So please look at the red arrow going down on the left side. So there are sample one and sample two. And uh, the field of where the right, uh, where the arrow is, means the low dose part. So our main goal is to reduce the total number of low dose part and bring them into higher UV dose part so that we can gather the higher efficacy. So let me introduce three case studies. First is guide vein. So we applied the guide vein mainly in order to make a kind of disturbance of flow stream inside the UV reactor so that we can make a kind of turbulence inside the reactor. And uh, each microorganism's resistance, resistance time can be increased. So here, as I said, there can be a case of low dose and high dose. So by installing a guide vein, you can see on the right side of the picture, there can be a kind of high turbulence and we can we can extend the total resistance time of each microorganisms. And the result is this graph. So in the red circle, uh, the blue line means before guide vein, and the red line means after guide vein. So you can figure out that the amount of the particles at the lower dose part in before guide vein can be in decreased into the point of after guide vein. So as I said, our main goal is to reduce low dose part for higher efficacy. And the second case study is lamp, UV lamp repositioning. So by repositioning UV lamp, as you can see on the sample one, there can be a case of microorganism that can pass through the UV reactor without any exposure, without any exposure to the UV dose. So we want to stop that kind of phenomenon so that we intentionally make a kind of repositioning of UV lamp, and we can make a kind of the same turbulence effect inside the UV reactor. So here you can see the green line is the sample one we did, we saw before, and the red line is sample two. So you can figure out that uh, the low dose part amount of the particles were moved into the higher dose part by just changing the lamp position. And the last case study is UV chamber reformation. And here's also sample one and sample two. Let me introduce those th things. And sample one is using 24 quantities of UV lamp. And it can treat 750 cubic meters per hour capacity. And the right one, sample two, is using 22 quantities of UV lamp, but it can treat 1,000 cubic meters per hour capacity with the consistent efficacy. This is what we want to intend. So here's the graph you can see. The sample one and sample two. So from sample one to sample two, you can see that at the same field of the UV dose, you can see there the quantity, total quantity of particles are increased without any change on its efficacy. It means by increasing 25% more capacity and just let 25 more percent to be treated, but you need less quantity of UV lamp with the same efficacy level. Okay, so let me summarize as my last so for higher F disinfection efficacy of UV technology, I introduced the guide vein, UV lamp reposition, and UV chamber reformation. Of course, those are not the only things we can have, UV technology can have. But this is a kind of main in improvement we did for our system. So here you can see this is our UV reactor. It is called Mega UV. And we recently got an award from Korean government named Jang Yong Shil Award because this mega UV unit uh, is recognized as the world's first UV disinfection unit with the largest capacity, 1,005 cubic meters per hour, through just one single module, and by decreasing footprint 44.5% and the decreasing power consumption requirements by 44%. So what I want to say throughout this conference is 
Uh, I want to break down the kind of stereotype that UV technology cannot pass the USCG standard because there is also a way to pass and we are also successfully doing the land-based tests now. So please, I hope you break down that kind of stereotype throughout this presentation. Thank you.